I'm in the office of the world's richest man. And I'm here to convince him to save the planet. Now, you've heard of him, I'm sure. Boy genius, billionaire, Eric Steele, CEO of Steele Technologies. 10 years ago, back in 2025, Steele made his fortune by inventing a new cryptocurrency, KCoin. Now, it's the billion dollar backbone that funds every one of his latest business ventures. I mean, five minutes of this man's time costs more than my house. And he's got his hand out. He is supremely smug, wearing cowboy boots and a, a tight black shirt, and he's smiling, you know? Seems like he's always smiling. In all honesty, I don't feel good about my chances of persuading this plutocrat, but I have a backup plan. You see, Steele's bodyguards patted me down before I entered his office, but they didn't find what I'm carrying in my pocket. I can feel their hands pass right over it because it's very small. Small, but powerful. Okay, let me back up a bit. My name is Mark Alpert, and I'm a science journalist. I used to write articles about astrophysics, but after the California Dust Bowl of 2029, the wildfires of 2031, I became a climate change crusader. I mean, when the entire planet is burning, what's the point of writing about anything else? The ironic thing is, when I first met Eric Steele, I thought he was one of the good guys. I mean, he had a fantastic idea for a new source of renewable energy. Steele planned to build solar panels in space, giant orbital arrays that would focus sunlight on immense solar panels. You see, out in space, 22,000 miles above the ground, Earth, sunlight is more intense than it is down here on the Earth. And there's no nighttime. So it's continuous power, always on exactly what we need to get rid of gas and coal plants forever. I mean, each orbital station could generate two billion watts of power and send it straight down through the atmosphere via microwave beams. And then the receiver dishes on Earth could stream all that clean electricity into the local grid, rain or shine, because microwaves can pass through any weather. Now, I'm an astrophysics expert, so I knew Steele's project could work, and he said he'd lined up a hundred billion dollars of investor money to fund a dozen orbital space stations. But it turns out that Steele's space proposal <laughs> was a sham. I contacted his investment partners. They said they hadn't agreed to fund the orbital space stations. Then, a month ago, I figured out what had happened. Steele was pivoting to a new idea. He called it Sky Cove. This new idea, Sky Cove, had nothing to do with clean energy. Instead, it was a, a luxury space station, 
a huge uh, ring-shaped habitat hanging in low orbit with recycled water and air and enough supplies for hundreds of people to live there for years. But exactly who would get to live there? Can you take a wild guess? Well, I discovered that the price for tickets aboard Skyco would cost five billion dollars a piece. The world's billionaires could continue slow roasting the earth and if things got really bad, say they ran out of water for their swimming pools or the masses stormed their estates, well, plutocrats could simply blast off to their orbiting Mount Olympus and watch planet Earth collapse from above. Steele was giving his fellow plutocrats an excuse to do absolutely nothing about global warming. So, I wrote a story telling all the facts, the price of Skyco, the perks, all of it. The public outrage was immediate. Headlines in, in every language, demonstrations worldwide. Nobody wants to gaze up at the elite while they leave uh, the rest of us behind. After my story published, I got a package in the mail. It was from a whistleblower, an engineer in Steele's company who'd been fired, and he was just as pissed as I was that Steele had pivoted from solar power to Skyco. The package contained reams of damaging evidence, evidence that showed Steele used coal-fired power plants to run the computer servers mining his cryptocurrency. Steele was funding Sky Cove with dirty money. He posed as an environmental savior while his cryptocurrency burned up more energy than New York City. The package also contained a flash drive loaded with software. The whistleblower said, all I needed to do was plug the drive into a computer behind Steele's corporate firewall. The software would duplicate K-Coins instantly driving the price of his cryptocurrency to zero. The billionaire would be bankrupt in minutes. But I'm no saboteur. I, I'm a reporter. I, I, I didn't want to keep the flash drive, but I couldn't throw it away either. So, here I am in Steele's office, and he keeps shaking my hand. Finally, let's go. I put mine back in my pocket, make sure the flash drive is still there. He's invited me here to Space Corp America, his headquarters, because he thinks my article is unfair. He wants me to see his side of things. He starts blathering on about Sky Cove, the innovations, the advances. I mean, he's so excited, he can't sit still. Finally, I just cut in and ask him, what happened to the space power idea? Solar panels in orbit, clean electricity for everyone. Steele looks out the window, looks at me and says, the solar project? Well, just wasn't attractive enough for investors. The risks were too high. At the end of the day, it's, it's not my job to slow down global warming. That, that's the government's responsibility. You get it, right? It's just business. My heart is pounding. Dizzy and shaking, I, I point at steel and say, People like you control the government. I say, you use your money and your lobbyists to get anything that you want. Steele keeps smiling. Relax, he says. I mean, we can talk about this calmly, can't we? <laughs> so, 
I relax and I calmly ask him a few more questions. After the interview is over, I tell him my editor wants the files right away and I ask him if I can borrow a computer to transmit them. Steele nods, but he isn't listening. He's staring up at the sky. Steele's secretary takes me to the reception area and hands me a silver laptop. I load the flash drive. All I have to do is hit enter and trillions of dollars worth of Steele's cryptocurrency will evaporate. Just like all the lakes and glaciers and species for the last 100 years. If I hit enter, Sky Cove gets grounded. His coal factories in Russia go silent. Financial institutions would, would teeter, maybe collapse. If I had entered, it's also the end of me as a journalist. Or, or I could leave, do nothing, just write my story and, and, and hope for change. You know, everyone keeps saying it, it feels like the world is ending but I think it depends on who's the author. Too long I've been writing epilogues and, and elegies. It's time for a new story.